What's going on guys? This is Vinylik Puma, back with another Rise of the Tomb Raider video, and today I wanted to go over 10 of what I think are among some of the best skills in the game. Now, before we start, I'm mostly going to be focusing on skills that you can select upon leveling up, as certain skills like Ancient Abilities or Geologist are acquired by completing Challenge Tombs, and I'm going to assume that you're going to complete all of the Challenge Tombs. Also, it's worth pointing out that there are tons of skills that have synergy with one another, and with that in mind, it was hard to narrow this list down to just 10 skills. Some entries may consist of two or three skills each, and there were plenty of great skills that I left out. So, as always, feel free to leave some of your favorites in the comments section below. However, and in no particular order, I am pleased to present 10 of what I think are among some of the best skills in Rise of the Tomb Raider, starting now. Number 10. Avid Learner. If there is one skill that should be acquired as soon as possible, it's Avid Learner. What this does is allows you to earn bonus XP from survival caches, documents, relics, and challenges, and as you can imagine, this is incredibly useful. Not only will Avid Learner allow you to improve your experience gain at the beginning of the game, but the effects are cumulative over time, meaning that the earlier that you take the skill, the more dramatic the benefits are long term. Taking this skill will also make it more likely that you acquire enough experience to acquire all of the other skills in the game. So again, and if you are able, you should really acquire Avid Learner as soon as possible, as the improvements long term can be quite substantial. Number 9. Deadly Force. In my opinion, this skill is a no-brainer. While it is a tier 2 skill, and you will need at least 8 skills in order to acquire it, the ability to complete stealth finishers faster and easier makes a big difference. Not only is the increased speed at which you can kill enemies useful, but this skill will save you the heartache of constantly having to tap buttons to pull off this stealth finisher successfully. So with that in mind, you should definitely get this skill as soon as you are able to. Otherwise, I don't think there's really a whole lot else to say about this one, other than you should get it and it will save you a lot of time and hassle. Number 8. Breath Control Plus Nerves of Steel Given that the bow is such an essential piece of kit earlier on as well as later on in the game, taking these skills is incredibly useful. Both skills improve the amount of steady aim time that you have on charged bow shots, with Breath Control having no prerequisites, while Nerves of Steel requires that you have at least 8 skills selected or spec'd for. In my mind, both of these skills are essential, as the improvements to hold time allow you to have a little bit more time in lining up pinpoint shots with the bow. I also think both skills work well with some of the game's more powerful bows, like the compound bow, as you can mitigate the compound bow's lower hold times. And breath control in particular is really useful early on in the game, as that very first bow that you get has absolutely awful hold times, and these can be mitigated with this skill. Overall, both of these are great skills, and I would highly recommend that you acquire both of them as soon as possible. Number 7. Thick Skinned plus Heart of Stone. Now, both of these skills basically do the same thing, which is allow you to take less damage from enemy gunfire and melee attacks. The main difference is that the Thick Skinned skill has no prerequisites, meaning that you can take it as soon as you are able to, while Heart of Stone is a tier 3 skill and requires that you have at least 19 other skills unlocked. The benefits from both of these skills should be pretty obvious, as improved damage reduction is always a nice thing to have. While this may matter a little bit less in the lower difficulties, since the enemies deal less damage and you have health regeneration, it can prove to be much more useful on the higher level difficulties due to how enemies deal more damage, and you won't just be able to regen whatever health that you just lost. Ultimately, both of these are great skills that complement one another, and regardless of difficulty, I highly recommend that you pick them up, as they can make the game quite a bit easier. Number 6. Naturalist plus Survivalist. Both of these skills are from the Hunter Tree, and can be taken once you've specced for any 8 skills. Naturalist allows you to increase the amount of natural crafting resources that you can gather, while Survivalist allows you to increase the amount of man-made crafting resources you can gather. So together, both of these skills will increase the amount of resources that you can acquire as you play through the game. While I wouldn't consider these to be extremely high priority, both skills are very useful. Especially if you're trying to acquire just the right amount of screws or just the right amount of ore for that next upgrade. 
overall, I would say that both of these skills are very useful and you may want them if you feel like you're constantly running out of resources. Number five, Dragonfire Shells. Of the alternate ammo types for guns, the shotgun's Dragonfire Shells are pretty nice. Not only can you alt fire these provided you've run out of ammo or you're in a situation where you need to reload, but the Dragonfire Shells themselves tend to be more practical than hollow point rounds due to how they can light enemies on fire. Once the enemies are on fire, the flames can burn through and remove their armor, opening them up to additional shots and attacks, or the flames can ultimately consume them and defeat them that way. I also think when compared to hollow points, Dragonfire Shells are a little less costly to craft, as you need only two Magnesite and one Oil, as opposed to three Magnesite. Assuming you had 40 Magnesite and 40 Oil, and enough shotgun shells and pistol ammo, you should be able to craft Dragonfire Shells 20 times, while you could only craft hollow points about 13 times. So, between the somewhat lower crafting costs and burning potential, Dragonfire Shells are far better and worth the skill point investment. I'd say you really couldn't go wrong with picking up this skill, so be sure to pick it up once you get the shotgun and you have any 8 skills acquired. Number 4. Field Medic plus Strong Medicine If you're playing on Seasoned Raider or higher, any healing related skills, whether they be codexed or tomb based ones like Fast Healer or more conventional ones like Field Medic, you're going to want these skills as they make it easier to survive. This is especially the case in Survivor as you don't have the ability to regenerate health between fights like you can in Season Raider and below. As for the Strong Medicine skill, this can make combat quite a bit easier should you get noticed. After all, the ability to resist damage after bandaging your wounds can give you a pretty nice cushion in both Seasoned Raider and Survivor and allow you to quickly get to cover so you can quickly regroup and plan your next line of attack. In general, I recommend you pick both of these skills up for the higher difficulties and as far as acquisition is concerned, Field Medic can be acquired once you've already acquired 8 other skills, and Strong Medicine can be acquired once you have 19 other skills. Number 3. Grenadier While this requires the special grenade launcher attachment for the rifle to use, the grenade attachment for rifles is quite powerful and can be used to great effect. Now, the grenadier skill in particular makes using the grenade launcher a lot easier, as you can craft the ammo that the grenade launcher uses rather than trying your luck and trying to find the ammo on defeated enemies. What's also cool about this ability is that you can craft these grenades at campsites as well as on the fly. So if you're in the middle of a long drawn out fight and you run out of grenades, you can simply just craft more provided you have the proper amount of resources. Which if you ask me, is awesome since the grenade launcher attachment can be so powerful. I would say if you're a big fan of the assault rifle, you should first get the grenade launcher attachment and then after that, you should consider getting this skill once you've got 8 other skills and you've unlocked tier 2. That way, you can more readily and comfortably use the grenade launcher to quickly dispatch various foes. Number 2. Finesse While I will admit that I'm not the best at stealth and chaining stealth kills together, finesse is still a pretty great skill. What it does is allows you to earn bonus XP for successfully chaining headshots, stealth kills and death from above kills with longer chains providing bonus multipliers. So essentially, the more stealthy you are and the better you play the game, the more experience you will receive and if you ask me, that is pretty awesome. You may find this works really well with the triple shot and true shot skills on the bow as you can very easily chain together some stealth kills this way for some decent XP gain. So even if you're not a master of ninja-like stealth, you may be able to get some decent XP bonuses every once in a while by targeting three enemies and taking them out with some well-placed shots. If you want my opinion though, the skill is really just one point and it wouldn't hurt to get the skill in the event that you do manage to pull off some awesome chain kills while in stealth. So as soon as you've got eight skills acquired, you may want to get this one to help your experience gain as you play through the game. And for our final entry, number one, Double Shot plus Triple Shot plus True Shot. So, these are three different skills that all stack cumulatively with one another. 
Double shot is a skill that allows you to lock on to two different enemies at once with the bow and fire simultaneously. And this is enhanced by another skill called triple shot, which allows you to do this with three enemies and is further enhanced by true shot, which modifies the ability to fire at an enemy's head rather than their torso. As you can imagine, this skill is very powerful as you can use it to quickly dispatch multiple enemies at once. However, in my experience, I tend to use it on one or two enemies at once, since using the double slash triple shot in conjunction with true shot is a bit faster than aiming directly at an enemy's head and firing. Granted, you'll need to be fairly far into the game to take advantage of all three skills, as triple and true shot require a minimum of 19 skills to unlock, but I'd say long term, it's better to wait until you can get all three of these, rather than solely rely on something like Deadeye, which requires a little bit more effort for aiming. Overall, all three of these skills in conjunction with one another are awesome, and you should definitely acquire them if you like the bow. Okay guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.